Africa. Welcome to Health Africa on AAU TV. AAU TV is the voice of higher education in Africa. Today on Health Africa, we are discussing prostate disorders. Yes, prostate disorders. And as I indicated last week, we are having a series on men's health. So last week, we brought to you men's mental health. And this week, we are going into the physical health. So we are doing prostate disorders. What do you know about prostate disorders? If you're a man out there, you should know all these things because they come as you grow. And if you're a wife or a girlfriend, please stay with me. Let's learn together and then you educate your man afterwards. It's going to be very interesting as I have a doctor from the very famous Medimosis Prostate Center. That is why you shouldn't miss it. My name is Bridget Amadente. I'll be back shortly after this break and then we'll get the conversation started. This is Africa's most friendly nation, Ghana. A warm reception awaits you in an environment where you can discover and harness your full potential. Your home is an academic haven lying northeast of the city center, a quick dash from the airport. A spirited community where young, vibrant minds are empowered to express themselves, break academic boundaries, and thrive in an atmosphere of rich cultural heritage and excellence in various collegiate and extracurricular activities. This institution represents a whole new world of fun and offers you a variety of activities, facilities and services geared towards your total development. Believing in the uniqueness of all our students, we encourage them to pursue excellence in integrity Welcome to the University of Ghana, your preferred academic destination. You're welcome back from that short break. As I indicated, we are discussing prostate disorders. And today I have with me in the studio, not Zoom, Dr. James Aqua. He's with the Medimosis Prostate Center. And it's located in Accra, Ghana, Adenta to be specific. Dr. Aqua, you're welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here today. I'm also happy to be here with you. And I'm happy to be discussing men's health. You know, it gives me some upper power, I don't know, some power be like that. I don't know. But then I would like us to go straight to discuss the prostate as an organ. What is the prostate as an organ? Okay. So basically most men think that having a prostate is a problem. But the prostate is a very useful organ. In fact, it is the beginning of life. Wow. So. Not the heart? No. <laughs> you and I are here because some, we had prostate. Oh, okay. When mm. a partner, like a man and a wife, have sexual intercourse, the fluid that you see mm. coming out mm. is coming from the prostate. Oh. And that is what it nourishes the, the sperms so that we can have babies. Uh -huh. So without the prostate, there will be no nourishment of sperms and there will be no life. So that is how important the prostate is. It is located right below our bladder. Uh -huh. The bladder is where the urine is stored. Uh -huh. And around, at the back or below the bladder is where the prostate is located. Uh -huh. The size of the prostate is very small, just like the shape of a walnut. Okay. or the size of a walnut, but as you are growing, it, it also grows. Every man in the reproductive age is having a prostate. Okay. So it's good to have a prostate. Okay. A man without a prostate ceases to be a man. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the brief dis uh, description of the prostate. Okay. Apart from its storing uh, fluid, mm -hmm. I mean the, the semen, okay. it also serves other functions like the male hormone, you hear of the male hormone, mm -hmm. the testosterone. Yeah. That is the one that makes a man a man, yeah. give us erection, That's give us true. all this muscular shape and this deep voice. Oh. And it is all to the function of the prostate. Mm -hmm. So in fact, it's a very useful organ. Mm -hmm. But at times, as you are aging, mm -hmm. a lot of complications come. Okay. That is why we have to discuss it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now you talked about what the prostate is and some of the functions, nourishing the semen and everything. Uh, yes. Is there any other additional thing? Um, those are the two main functions. Those are the two main but functions. But within 
the 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 fluid that it produces mm -hmm. has a whole lot of also other functions to the body okay. because when you analyze the semen itself you find that there are a whole lot of vitamins minerals iron and all those things in the semen mm. yes so when you lose all those things it also affects your overall health as a man so for example if for some reason your prostate is taken off now all your male voice will become like a woman <laughs> You will start developing breasts and all that, yes, because your hormones will not be working as a man again. Mm -hmm. So this is how important. And then your, your, your I mean, your bone health, mm -hmm. because it gives men the stronger bones. Oh. That is why our muscle strength yeah. and all this bone is different from the women. Yeah. We have thicker bones. It's all due to the function of this prostate. If we take it out from there, you will start becoming developing women features. Yes, so this is how important the hormone is. Apart from that, there are basic, basic, basic function, give us our energy, give us all this kind of mental health and all that. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated and very useful organ. Yeah. That is why when diseases affect it, it mm -hmm. becomes a big problem yeah. to the men's health. Okay. Yeah. Now that you've mentioned diseases that affect it, let's come to the disorders of the prostate. Mm. That is the prostate cancer and all of that. Can you take us through? Yeah. So basically, there are three main diseases that could affect the prostate. Mm -hmm. The famous one we know is the prostate cancer. Then we have the prostate enlargement, mm -hmm. what we normally call the BPH. And then we have the third one, that is the prostatitis. Okay. That always remains silent because I think maybe people don't know much about mm -hmm. it. But that even affects younger men. Wow. For the enlargement and the cancer, it's people that are older, okay. let's say from the ages of 40 and okay. above. But for the last one, we in the... Oh, yes, 40. Young. Yes. We have half people that we have to give them rubber at the age of 40. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And the young ones, they happen to get more of the infections, I mean the prostatitis. Yes, so these are the three things that basically affect the prostate. Okay. If we take it one by one, yeah, let's take it one when by we one. talk about prostate cancer, you know, because it's a gland, mm -hmm. it's an organ, mm -hmm. it contains cells, it contains tissues. Cancer means that the cells or tissues of the prostate have transformed to a different thing altogether, mm -hmm. different from what it used to be. So it, when we are able to identify that, you no, know, the prostate contains cells A, but right now we are seeing other cells different from what we are seeing, we say the prostate is cancerous. Okay. And because of the location where it is, mm -hmm. the cancer can spread to the nearby organs. Because as I said, it, it is located around the bladder. Mm -hmm. So if there's a cancer of the prostate, it spread to the bladder, then it comes to the kidney. You know, on the top of the bladder, you have where the urine passes, the yeah. kidney is also there. It goes to your bones, because mm -hmm. you have a pelvic bone mm -hmm. in, the, in, in that mm -hmm. area. Spread to your liver, it can even come to your lungs. Those are the end stages. And then finally, it, 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 it takes you off. Oh. So this is how severe the prostate cancer, cancer can be. So it's basically the cells of the prostate changing okay. to different cells. Okay. What you call the cancer cells. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we have the enlargement. Yeah. With the prostate enlargement, the cells do not change. Mm -hmm. But the gland itself increases astronomically. Mm. Though when you are aging, because when you are younger, it is young. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is small. small. But after 40, then it starts enlarging rapidly. If you are not lucky, it doesn't enlarge proportionally. Mm. It over enlarges. So, for example, the normal weight of the prostate average, we say it should be around 40 grams. Okay. Some people, it can enlarge to about 200 grams. That's about five times the average size. So... In this case, we say the prostate has enlarged or benign prostatic hyperplasia, okay. what we simply call the BPH. BPH. Yes, so that is the enlargement. It is not cancerous, okay. but it has enlarged. Why that when it enlarges, it becomes a problem? Yeah. Because where it is, that is mm -hmm. where your urine also passes. Okay. So when it becomes enlarged, it closes your urine outlet, mm -hmm. and then you can't urinate. So most men that get urinary retention okay. is because their prostates are enlarged. 
So you see, when you come, the first aid to give you is to pass through what you call the urethra catheter. Mm -hmm. That tube, it's a long rubber. Yeah. We pass it through the manhole to drain all the, all urine, the urine before we start treatment. So oh. people that you see wearing urinary catheter means that their prostate is enlarged. Then we have the prostatitis. Mm -hmm. That is the inflammation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get uh, urinary infections, like urinary tract infections yeah, with the men. Yeah, yeah. And then some of the bacteria sometimes leak to the prostate because mm -hmm. you know where the urine passes and where the semen passes mm -hmm. is the same, the same tube. But they are from different places. Oh. Urine is from the bladder, semen is coming from the prostate. Mm -hmm. So there is a junction mm -hmm. that they meet. It's an entrance. Okay. So at times, bacteria leak there oh. and then goes to infect the prostate or make it inflamed. And then they'll start feeling pains. It also gives a whole range of complications. Yeah. So in that case, it is not enlarged, it is not cancerous, but it is inflamed. inflamed. Yeah, so that is what we call the prostatitis. Okay. That even affects young men at the age of 20 years and all that. 20? Oh, yes. Is it because of the UTI that has led to the uh, bacteria leaking? Exactly. So if you get UTI and don't treat it? I don't it. treat it exactly. You don't treat it well. Not even just treatment. Because most people, when you get a urinary tract infection, we give you medication. We mm -hmm. say, take this medicine for seven days. When it's done, come back. Mm -hmm. But by the time they finish, they don't feel any pain. Yeah, exactly. You're fine. So that's it. They don't want to come back in. But you, all you know, there are still some left that might have leaked somewhere. Okay. So over time, you see that it also starts infecting the person, and then you start getting another symptom. Okay. And in that case, even the medicine we gave you for the first time might not even work again. Mm. And that's how bacteria are. You don't treat them, or well, the next time you take another the same medicine, it won't, it won't work. You have to be changing them. Wow. So when you are giving an antibiotics or maybe some product to take mm -hmm. for an infection, when you are done, let us be sure that everything, everything is clear. Is mm. Because yeah. they also multiply. Yeah. They are living. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my question, my next question before we go on a break is that mm. prostatitis and then the, I mean, the prostate enlargement, enlargement. Mm. can it all combine and cause the cancer, the prostate cancer? Okay. There is no relation that people who have prostate enlargement must get prostate cancer. Okay. Also, those with prostatitis, mm -hmm. like automatically, they must get prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. But research shows that those who have prostate cancer, most of them have enlargement. Okay. So having prostate enlargement is a risk factor okay. for prostate cancer, but it is not a cause. It's not. For because people's prostate have become cancerous, even without becoming enlarged. Mm -hmm. It is not a cause, but it's one of the risk factors. More of those who have prostate cancer have prostate enlargement. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're going on a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at some of the signs and symptoms okay. and more of the complications. Because if you are getting it at 20 years, it's a very serious thing that mm. needs to be dealt with. We're going on a quick break and then we'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned.
Welcome back from that short break. As I indicated, we are still discussing prostate disorders. You can follow the conversation on Association of African Universities on Facebook and then on YouTube. So we are moving on to talk about some of the signs and symptoms that one will experience when the person has maybe prostate cancer, enlargement, or the other one. Yes. Okay. So people with prostate problems, mm -hmm. because most of the time, all the three uh, types that I described, okay. their signs and symptoms are almost the same. Okay. So at times it's even difficult to differentiate to the, without oh. testing. Okay. You realize that now you are urinating more frequent at night. Mm -hmm. Normally you have to urinate at least once, at most one or twice mm -hmm. before you wake up. But you realize there's a change. When you sleep and you, and you, from let's say 9, 10 p.m., you urinate about six, seven, eight times before daybreak. That is one of the classical signs of a prostate problem. Mm -hmm. you also, there's something you also call um, urgency. It's when you feel like urinating, you cannot hold on. Mm -hmm. You have to quickly rush and go to the washroom. Otherwise, it comes by itself. So a lot of people with prostate problems keep on um, oh, yeah. showing their dresses because they cannot hold the urine for longer. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one we call hesitancy. Mm -hmm. You feel like urinating. When you go to the washroom, it doesn't come. It delays for about maybe 10, 15 seconds. Normally, when you go, it has to come within the first 30 seconds. Yeah. But this time, you see that about 10, 15 seconds, it, it, it doesn't flow. Mm -hmm. It's also a sign of prostate problem. There is something called a straining. Mm -hmm. Normally, you don't have to force yourself force to urinate. Yourself, yes. yeah. But this time, you realize that you have to strain. I mean, you have to force yourself before the urine comes out mm -hmm. because there's an obstruction there. You know, I described that when it enlarges, yeah. it obstructs the flow. Exactly. So when there's an obstruction, you have to strain before the urine flows. Mm -hmm. You realize there's a weak streaming. Weak streaming is, you know, normally when you the urine comes to a certain kind of pressure, yeah. like a force. Mm -hmm. But then you see that when the urine is flowing, it doesn't move away from you. It drops right in front of you. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. That is what you call a weak streaming. Okay. Yeah, the urine it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't shoot with pressure. Yeah. Yeah, it comes weak. It's also a prostate problem. There's another one we call a dribbling. Mm -hmm. And so the urine to come that straight way, mm -hmm. it's 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 it, it, I mean it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's dribbling on its way. <laughs> yes, it shakes. You get it. It shakes and sometimes it even splits. Aye. Yeah, into two, or even in multiple uh, directions. Yes, these are all. Um, classical signs and things on the post. We have another one you call the dysuria. That's when you feel severe pain mm -hmm. because there's an obstruction there. Mm -hmm. So when you try to pee, there, it's very painful. Mm -hmm. So you see older men going into the washroom and they are screaming mm -hmm. even before the urine comes. Oh. Yes, it's also a prostate problem. We have incomplete voiding. Mm -hmm. It's when you feel like urinating, you go. Let's all comes. Mm -hmm. The majority of the urine retains. Yes. Okay. And you will fail it. You will fail that no. It's not the, done. Yeah, it's still not done. Then you have to go again. Oh. Yes, it's also a prostate problem. For those in advanced stages like cancer, you see that when you urinate, you see blood. Yes, that's the hematuria. You see that blood is flowing. That is a prostate cancer. Even sometimes those with enlargement, if you strain yourself more, mm -hmm. there's, the blood vessel will break and then you urinate blood. Sometimes you get severe waist pain because I was saying that if it is cancerous, it's spread to the yeah. bones also. Yeah. So you start getting severe waist pain, excessive weight loss, mm. and all that. So these are some of the symptoms that should alert you that I'm um, having a prostate disorder. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there's no situation where maybe you find maybe um, abdominal swelling or something, nothing of the sort because it's inside. No, you won't see any swelling. Okay. You won't see. The only okay. thing you can maybe feel is uh, abdominal uh, pains. Okay. Lower abdominal pains. Okay. Yes, that is what you feel. But otherwise, you know, you are not going to see any visible thing mm. out there for you to tell that oh, my prostate is enlarged, unless we investigate. Okay. So yes. are prostate disorders lifestyle related? The way you eat, the way you drink, no exercise, sleeping, like mm. lifestyle. Has it got to do with lifestyle? In fact. Apart from the prostatitis mm -hmm. that I told you that one, it can, it can be due to an infection. Yeah. The prostate enlargement and then the prostate cancer have no direct cause, mm -hmm. but they are risk factors. Okay. 
the risk factors are being a man, because prostate doesn't affect women. So if you are a man, you are already at risk. Yes. Aging. Mm -hmm. People that are younger below the age of 40 are not at too much risk. Okay. But those after 40 are much risk. Um, statistics show that when you take 100 African men, mm -hmm. okay, African men all over the world, not only those in African soil, but African men all over the world. You know when you know an African man, you know. Yeah, Even see. if you are in the Caribbean, <laughs> you, you know yourself that you are an African man. Um, when you take 100 of them, at the age of 50, 50% 50 of them will have a prostate disorder. Wow. When they get to 70 years, 70% 70 of them, 80 years, you get 80% of them having prostate disorder one way or the other. Wow. Yes. So that is one of the risk factors. That is aging. Okay. Another risk factor is race. Race. Yes, the black. We the blacks. Black Unfortunately, oh. we uh, the how, blacks how get come? it more like. than our uh, the Caucasians. Yes, black men all over the world, wherever you are. Mm. So people were thinking that maybe it is the kind of food or the environment. But yeah. even the blacks that were born in America and even um, in South America, Asia. They are also at more risk than their fellow um, uh, Caucasians or white white, white men. men. Yes. So being a black is also a risk factor for prostate cancer. And the prostate reason for being black mm. and making it a risk factor has still not been found. So out. research has not really found anything. Oh concrete. how! <laughs> so that is one of the bad news. That is why we need to create a lot of awareness, especially yeah. with we blacks in Africa here. Yes. So that and then the lifestyle you talked about, mm -hmm. research also has also shown that in fact those people that have di been diagnosed with prostate cancer, mm -hmm. especially the cancer, have certain lifestyle. For example, excessive smoking and excessive intake of alcohol. Okay. Most of them that have prostate cancer have also have either smoked or taken alcohol before. Though there is no direct cause, because it's not all those who smoke and drink get prostate yeah. cancer okay. but there's also a bit of risk factor okay. there okay. and then gen sedentary lifestyle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lack of them. exercise eating a lot of junk food mm -hmm. indomie <laughs> eating a lot of junk you know junk food are food that you know you are taking but there's no nutrients yeah yes yeah. you are not getting anything from it. you're only filling your tummy yeah, those yeah. are junk food but if you're able to take a lot of vegetables and fruits, like I see here, this are yeah. good combination. <laughs> a lot of vegetables and fruits. Research also shows that those people have a better prostate health okay. than people who have a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So you talked about being a man as a risk factor. Mm. What if you are mixed? Like you have a bit of, you are a normal human being, but then you have a bit of male and you have a bit of female. Unfortunately, maybe you have mm. a penis. Are you still at risk? Yes, I think um, for yeah, I get your question. Mm -hmm. I think the male factor mm -hmm. with why we get more prostate because one of the treatments for prostate is to stop our male hormone. Okay. Mm, which I'll talk about it. But I think having testosterone because from some research shows that we the black men have a lot of testosterone compared to the white men. Okay. Which probably put us a, a lot of risk okay, than the white. Okay. So having that male hormone in excess is also somehow a risk factor. Okay. So people with double, so you know, yeah, having a male organ, in a, yeah. their hormones need to be analyzed. And in most of those people, one hormone dominates. Okay. So either the male hormone dominates or the female dominates. I think that's one of the reasons to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Then whether it's a male mm -hmm. or a female, but running mm -hmm. the sex hormones. Mm -hmm. So if the person's sex hormone, the male one dominates, then he becomes a male. Mm -hmm. Then the person also belongs to this our race, race group. Okay. But if the female hormone is the one that dominates, then the risk will be very low. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's move to diagnosis. Aside mm. the fact that you see all these signs that will tell you that this is what you have, how then can someone who has maybe very subtle signs mm. tell that, okay, this, what should be done or what is really done? Um, there are a lot of investigations. For example, we have the basic one you call the ultrasound scan. Okay. Ultrasound is, uh, you know, this machine that 
they will put on your lower abdomen mm -hmm. and then be scanning. The ultrasound can be able to view the prostate in your body and then take the measurement and see mm -hmm. if it is enlarged or not. Mm -hmm. There's something you call the DRE, that's the Degator Rectal Examination. Okay. At places where there is no ultrasound, the doctor can do an anal examination. And mm. if it's enlarged, the doctor can know. Really? Oh, yes. Now, we don't Doctors do that. Doctors are seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't do much often. But if you're in a rural area, oh, okay. and person presents with you with these uh, uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. and there's no ultrasound there, mm -hmm. there's what we call the direct examination. Put on gloves insert our fingers to the inner area and then fill if the process is enlarged we are going to fill it and know it is enlarged wow. there is also a blood testing for example their cancer we have a test we call the psa mm -hmm. that is the process specific antigen it's when the process becomes cancerous it releases certain chemicals into the blood so we take the blood sample and analyze that has the process released those antigens mm -hmm. in the blood that's what you call the PSA test. Okay. And there's a range. So when we check and realize that it's more than the um, recommended range, that means that your prostate is becoming cancerous. Okay. For more confirmatory tests of prostate cancer, we have what you call the prostate biopsy. Okay. So the biopsy is we take a certain portion of the prostate inside you. Mm -hmm. We take certain portion, take it to the lab, and then analyze and see which portions of the prostate is cancerous. Mm -hmm. So we are able to differentiate between which cells are normal mm -hmm. and which cells are cancer mm -hmm. cells. Okay. Then we can even determine which stage of cancer okay. you are. Okay. Um, for those with the prostatitis, sometimes mm -hmm. we even do a normal uh, urine examination or urine culture to find out if there are bacteria in there. Then we also use to diagnose. Sometimes we even take the semen mm -hmm. to the oh, lab. Really? Oh, yes. We take the semen to the lab to find out whether there are bacteria or any microorganism mm -hmm. in the semen okay. that is giving those inflammations. Giving yes, so basically, this are in advanced stages, we do MRI. That's yeah. what we call the magnetic mm -hmm. resonance imaging to analyze the bones of the pelvic because if it's becoming cancerous, the it MRI, the yeah, it will spread to the bone. So doing the MRI, we are able to detect whether the bones are becoming cancerous. Sometimes mm -hmm. X-ray, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, sometimes X-ray and all that to be used also for uh, mm -hmm. the diagnosis. So someone will ask, can mm. prostate disorders be reversed with diet, maybe a proper diet, a physical activity, and living a proper life? Can it be reversed with diet? Yes, it can. that's a good question. The, you know, the main aim of prostate problem is to get better life yes, for exactly. those that are affected. Mm -hmm. And better life will go with a better lifestyle also. Okay. Even if you are doing the treatment, mm -hmm. no matter what potent medicine is given to you, mm -hmm. and your overall health is not good, the medicine might not work or you might not respond good. Mm -hmm. Because when it's becoming cancerous, now you don't have to do, because in cancer, your immune system is becoming weaker and weaker. Yeah. Because if your immune system is stronger, the cancer will not have too much effect on you. But if you, you have already a weakened immune system, and the prostate becomes cancerous, mm -hmm. then it's going to be more, more complicated. Okay. So eating good vegetables, fruits, some kind of exercise, having enough rest and all that will boost your immune system, which will make your body be able to fight the cancer, mm -hmm. and together with medications that will be given. Okay. Yes, okay. So lifestyle is always recommended lifestyle. for even every man, whether you mm -hmm. have a prostate problem or not. Or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's move to some of the treatment methods you use at Medimosis. Take us through some of the treatment methods for the three disorders. Yes, so when it comes to the prostate enlargement, we have a supplement. Okay. Okay, it's a natural supplement that we, after scanning, mm -hmm. we take the measurement of the prostate. So when we realize that it's enlarged, then we, start, we put you on this supplement. We call it Postacure X. Okay. That is the product that we use. Postacure S and Postacure T. Okay. It's a capsules and then a tea. It's a natural product. So we put the person on. The person will be taken. And then we'll be review, monitoring the person monthly okay. with the ultrasound to, monitor, to see if the prostate size is coming down. Okay. Because the aim is to reduce the prostate size mm -hmm. so that it doesn't go and obstruct the urine, urine flow. So that's what we do for those with enlargement. For those with cancer, like I told you, most people with cancer might have uh, the enlargement. Yeah. So those with them too, 
there are other supplements that we give to them. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be monitoring the PSAs. Mm -hmm. We'll do some biopsies also to mm -hmm. know the stage of the cancer. Mm -hmm. Then we're monitoring their PSAs for it to come down. There is a, an opportunity for people with prostate cancer yeah. and even prostate enlargement. Mm -hmm. So people shouldn't give up in yeah. their fight yeah. for prostate solutions. Because people, a lot of people tend to say that they've been taking drugs, but then still it doesn't, it's as yes. if it doesn't get healed and stuff like that. So they tend to give up and then they start using the pumpers and stuff. And that, yeah. One of the dangers is that the men do not want to go and check. Yeah. Because at times we even pick a whole team Mm -hmm. to a particular institution, okay. maybe your institution here, mm -hmm. to screen all the men. Because we realized that the awareness, wasn't, awareness is not that much. Yeah. Even before, even those in the medical field, if you are not in a facility mm -hmm. where you deal with prostate issues much, you might not even be educating your clients on prostate problem. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the, even if you go to America, it's the, second, the number two leading cause of cancer death. Oh, Apart from, from skin cancer, prostate cancer leads. Oh. So in a year, a lot of men die from prostate cancer. So most of the men, because of the horror story they've had, mm -hmm. they do not want to check. But one of the treatment or preventive way is to be able to detect it at early stages. Mm -hmm. So for example, the PSA, the highest reading is let's say four. And then some come and then the reading is 100. Hey. Some come, the reading is 1,000. Some come, the reading is 10,000. Imagine when you, are you going to treat a reading of 10 yeah. and all the way to 4. four. We have to bring it down below 4. But assuming the person came and then let's say the reading is around 20, it's at the very early stages. Yeah. It is easy yeah. to restore it back to normal. Mm. Same as even the prostate size. The scan, I told you, the average weight should be around 40 grams. Yeah. If you come and it's 200 grams, See? that is That's five times the average weight. Now we have to shrink it all the way to 40. 40. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Surgical options are there, but those are the stages where um, it's complicated. There's nothing that can be do medically. Mm -hmm. Then you go to surgical by even removing the whole prostate. Oh, and I've told you the disadvantages of remove, not having a prostate. Yes. It affects your Only erection. A man again. Yes, and even those with prostates, if they don't treat it, they cannot even have an erection. Oh, you guys there? Yeah. Oh, yes. It's even one of the one of the signs to even know that once your prostate oh, is affected, okay. you may not even get an erection mm -hmm. at all. So it affects their way of life in so many ways. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. best to to start checking early. By the age of forty, every year, you take it upon yourself that I'm going to do my prostate, and it doesn't cost much. Mm -hmm. The cost come when you didn't you don't come early, you don't come and early. it advances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if your PSA is 10,000, imagine how many years you will take to bring it down to four. So wow. that's why this awareness is uh, yeah, very, 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 very necessary. Important. Okay, so yes. the reason why we even came up with the men's series was because I sent out a poll and then most of them were like, okay, so as I'm growing, the thing that I'm very worried about is my prostate. Mm. Most of them were about prostate, yeah. prostate, prostate. But to go and check is the problem. That's why today we are having this conversation. But why so don't they, did you ask them why, they, why don't they check? I, I have no idea. Men and their reasons, they, mm. they have just decided not to go and check. Yeah. So I'm hoping that with all this information, maybe, they'll go and check. Maybe. So what would be your advice to a man who is growing? Maybe he's not even 30 or he's not even 40 to um, concerning prostate. Yeah. So there is also another issue of family history. Okay. So for example, if your grandfather had a prostate problem, mm -hmm. Your dad is having a prostate problem. Uh, then you, the job. man, you are of more or even higher risk. Yeah. So you should be checking even before the age of 40. Because like mm -hmm. I said, it's not expensive. Yeah. It's not expensive. So by the age of 40, you should be checking mm -hmm. even before the age of 40. So you can take it like, okay, every year as part of your overall uh, medical checkup, check -up, you do prostate also. For our place, if you are coming for your general medical checkup, we will run everything. Okay. But it's not all the facilities that do. Yeah. Probably they might not even have those things to check. But we do. So even before 40, we have to start checking, especially having that history mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. After 40, whether you have the family history or mm -hmm. not, being a man and a black, you have to check once a year so that whatever things that we can advise you appropriate. That is the best remedy. Mm -hmm. So all those that are scared, hey, I'm going home, definitely. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's a problem everybody should be worried about because it's common. Mm -hmm. It is real. It is there. So you have to. What our advice is, you have to start checking. 
from the age of 40, every year do it once. Okay. Every year do it. And when, when we see it rising, of course, we are saying that the post PSA didn't cross four. Mm. So once we know that it's a 3.8, then you know that, no, that it, it is going up. Then yeah. we quickly give you something to bring it down. Yeah. Same as even the prostate enlargement. And same as the prostatitis. So you are a young man, you are urinating more often, you are urinating more frequently. It is not diabetes, it is not an infection. Yeah. Most of the time, it is a prostate problem. Okay. okay. Yeah, so this is the best advice I can give. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Will they shouldn't you? fear the horror <laughs> stories. After the horror stories, when you go online, they will scare you. Yeah. But those people are in that kind of situation because one, either they didn't know much about it or they feared to go and... People are 60 years, they haven't checked their prostate before. Mm. And it's not all the time that it will give you... The, before you see these symptoms I'm talking about, it has advanced. So. Mm -hmm. All those ones I mentioned, you cannot urinate and all yeah, those. Yeah. It has advanced. Okay. Most times at the earlier stages, it's normal. It's normal. So, yeah. Oh. Okay, your final words, and then you can tell us what you do at Medimosis. Yeah, so there is um, a hope mm -hmm. for people going through prostate problems. Mm -hmm. For women mm -hmm. who, whose husbands have been diagnosed of a prostate problem. Mm -hmm. It is not a death sentence. Yeah. They and need, girlfriends, please. And girlfriends, yeah. hood partners, yes. have been diagnosed of a prostate problem. They need the support at this time. Mm -hmm. There is a way they will come back. Okay. Most women think that once your partner is diagnosed of prostate, then there's, everything is gone. Mm -hmm. Their lives have come to an end. The yeah. marriage, if not for the legal aspect, yeah. then there is no even need. Exactly. But it's not true. Okay. A lot of prostate problems that we have treated, and they are, they are normal and happy now. Mm -hmm. And metamorphosis, because we know, we have done this for more than 12 years. Wow. And since we started, most, today I'm happy. People mm -hmm. come and voluntarily, you see young people coming to check their prostate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because of the awareness yeah. we've created over the years. And your channel is helping us to create more awareness. Of course. In 20 years to come, we do not wish men to be struggling with yes. prostate problem again. Yeah. So please, they need to check. That is the most important. We need to check and then we, we need to treat. People who come there are happy. They get results, mm -hmm. especially for those that report earlier. So you shouldn't stay for it to get complicated. And it's, when it gets complicated, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And one of the bad things is that it affects our fathers who are on retirement. Yes. So, you know, at that time, they are not working, mm -hmm. and the money is not coming much. And sometimes it's difficult to even continue, continue treatment. With the so, treatment. one, the checking early is very important. And those who have it, also there is hope for them to also come and then we help them. Oh, I'm glad there's mm. hope. And At least your wife won't leave you. We have patients all over the world, though. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. We, even even Africa, like, we have a lot of patients from West Africa, okay. Europe, and then they, they travel all the way to come for treatment. Nice. Yes. Nice. nice. Most yeah. of our awards are even given by, um, like, Europeans or maybe uh, the American nations. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You've so you've gone a long way, yeah, but we are still working harder. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming through for us. We've enjoyed the conversation. And please, if you're a wife or a girlfriend or even a side chick, and you've listened to the conversation and you know and you've been equipped with all this information, please share with your husband, share with your boyfriend, share with your fiancé so that we can all live a healthy life. Advise him to go and check. And if you're a man, please go and check. After the survey, that's why we've had this conversation. Please go and check. Go to Medimosis Prostate Center. It's at Adenta. And check. Know your status. And then start with um, treatment. If you are free, then you are free. If you are free, then please continue with proper lifestyle so that you don't get into that situation. This has been Health Africa on AAU TV. My name is Bridget Amadente. Do stay tuned for other programs. Yeah.